I've never done a collab. Oh my gosh! <laughs> collab time! This is the Sarah. Yes, I'm Sarah. <laughs> um, my patrons know I've been talking about this collab for a while. Nice! It's happening. Yes. It's here. I am not in my living room. <laughs> yes, Amber is in my office. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad she came over. <laughs> yes. She is harassed by dogs for a good amount of time. I've got the proof on my pants, which you yes. can't see all the dog hair, yes. all of it. So welcome, welcome back to my channel. Um, you probably know by now that I really care about the environment, so that's what we're gonna be. We just did a video over on Sarah's channel, and we're kind of going off on that for like a really long thing. So if you want to see what we talked about before, head on over there and then come back here for the long rambly bit. Yes. Um, so what we were kind of talking about on my channel was just like the basics yeah. <laughs> of low impact movement um, and like reduce, reuse, recycle, how that all works. And now we're t kind of talking about systematic problems and yeah, boo, <laughs> capitalism, plastic. <laughs> That's my whole channel. <laughs> I will watch it forever. So that's great. <laughs> yes. Okay, so because everyone says reduce, reuse, recycle, but I didn't actually know what that meant. And I was just like, all of those things, but it's actually like a tier system. Yes. And so I was wondering if you could kind of explain that in like the process of okay. how you're supposed to use reduce, reuse, recycle. Okay, yeah. So the the first uh reuse or reduce <laughs> words. Reduce is the most important one, which is why it's the first step you do, because mm, recycling isn't always the best, and we'll get to that later, but reducing like the disposables and things that you bring into your life that you don't really need or that you can find simple alternatives to is the first thing to do. Um, all kinds of things. <laughs> yes. You can reduce, like, like maybe you don't need to get so many, like, prepackaged desserts. Maybe you can make some cookies. Mm -hmm. And, like, just stuff like that. Reducing what you're taking in fast fashion. Reducing your intake of that. So what does that mean? Is that, like, going and buying a really cheap shirt that then is ruined in a couple months and you just throw it away. Is that yeah, what there's, fast there's fashion a, means? Yeah, there's a, a, a spectrum to like, yeah, there are those really cheap items that you're like, oh, I got a bargain, this is so great, but you don't see what went behind that, like all of the like people who were affected very negatively in the environment mm. and even animals. Like everything can be so affected by that really low price that you're getting. Interesting. Plus then the quality of the product. But then there's still, like, most of the clothing that you're going to get when you, like, go to the store to buy clothes mm -hmm. is going to fall into that range of you don't know who's making it, and those conditions are awful, and the environmental impact from them is so bad. Interesting. Okay, so that's, like, a whole... It's a whole, a whole another... involved thing. Yeah, <laughs> I can do another video about that another time. Gotcha. Yeah. So, after reduce, we have reuse. Actually... Let's go back into reduce real quick. <laughs> so like you're saying you have like your kit of things mm -hmm. that you take with you. So for someone who is like, I can't remember anything like me, like yesterday I just bought like four more reusable grocery bags because I forgot all mine at home. Like what do you have like tip wise to help you remember those things? First, cause my, how I learned to get in the habit may not help everyone on my blog post at amberthess.com slash blog. There is a whole thing in my how to make a zero waste kit thing. There's links and stuff, but how I personally got in the habit of bringing the bags and then my kit was anytime I'd like go shopping, um, if I forgot my bags, I would have to buy only what I can carry and carry mm. everything I buy. So that if, if you're going like for a big grocery shopping and you can't go home and get your bags, and you can't afford to buy a bunch of high quality bags, then you have to just like load everything from the cart into your car and then bring your bags down and bring it into your house. So that like teaches you when you're about to leave the house and you think grocery store, you remember all those loose items that you have to like carry. <laughs> and like what a pain in the butt it will be. Yeah. If so you don't remember. Grab the bags. I keep my bags on like the coat closet door handle. I have a big tote bag that I keep them all in. And so you can just grab that and we're good to go. Awesome. Cool. That is, that is, I love that idea of like punishment. Yes. 
<laughs> because it is pretty motivational. It is. To, like, be inconvenienced by yourself and thinking, and you're, like, thinking of your future self mm-hmm. in that. So, okay, along that line, so, like, someone I was talking to recently, we were talking about the um, ban in Seattle for the one-use plastic straws. Yes, I love it so And much. they were talking about, like, well, if I'm going to bring my own straw everywhere, like, isn't that a pain in the butt, like, to clean and to carry around? And I was like, I don't think it would be that hard. But then again, I haven't actually done it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm wondering, like, what you can respond or how you respond to that. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll grab my wherever it is. This is the bulk of my kit. And, um... Show and tell time. Yeah. I didn't put the other thing in this bag, but it is in here. Here it is. Nope, that's... <laughs> this. Oh! If you get you a reusable straw, this makes it super easy, and then it's just a breeze to clean your straw, and like no sitting there like running it underwater hoping everything comes out. Mm-hmm. That's nasty. This, like, you just do just it a couple sh- times, and it's as easy as like washing a fork. It's so simple. And then if you have multiple straws, that makes it easier so you can change it out. You don't have to wash it like every, between every use. Right. So. Yeah. Something that I heard too that cracked me up yesterday, <laughs> I was listening to this whole interview, was this woman in Seattle was like, well, and like, you don't have to use a straw. <laughs> you can just like, sip it out of a cup. <laughs> exactly. See, like, I'm, most of the time, I don't bring my straw everywhere because I have two straws and like, I don't... And you I don't have to clean it or you forget yeah. it or something. I don't usually need it, but I do know that there are people who for various arrays of reasons, really need a straw Mm -hmm. to be able to drink. So that's why these straws are very important. And maybe if you get like a smoothie or something, you you need a straw kind of. Yeah. (laughs) It's kind of awkward to just like... Yeah, to have it like fall out of the bottom and hit you in the face. Yeah. So I totally get it. But I was like, it just... (laughs) <laughs> was it just boggled my mind where I was like, oh yeah, I don't have to use a straw exactly. at a restaurant when they bring me a glass. Yeah. <laughs> Stick a straw in there like, oh, okay. Yeah, so with that, like going to restaurants and they like automatically give you a straw, what I try to do is when I order my drink, I specify no straw, please. And like I say it as clear as I can, like looking them in the face, like, please, no straw. And then they're like, okay. So usually they like, <laughs> Remember, like, that was really weird. I won't give them a straw, right. but sometimes I forget. And, like, if you see them, like, going to pull out a straw to give to you, just say, I don't need one, and they'll just, they'll put, put it right back, back and yep. it will get you somewhere else, but... Like, because Quentin, my husband, he doesn't use straws, like, at all, because mm-hmm. I guess he's on um, the up and up. <laughs> I don't know if he did it intentionally or what. But, like, a lot of times if they bring down, like, two straws wrapped up, he'll just, like, leave his... Yeah, I don't use mine, and hopefully, like, I mean, in my mind, I'm like, if they see the unused straws over here, they're going to be like, maybe I shouldn't put it down on the table, because after that, you have to throw it away. Yeah. So, maybe they would ask, but, I mean, Mm -hmm. yeah. So, just saying, no straw. Yeah, or if you do bring your own, holding it up and saying, I brought my own straw, I don't need another one, that will stick in their brain. Yeah. They're like, Because it's out of the norm (laughs) for everyone. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. I think that's a good... I love all of those solutions. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we talked about reducing, which is the biggest part, so I figured yes. we should talk a lot about that. But, like, so reusing. And so I think something that, like, has been really bugging me recently is, like, you get a bunch of junk mail with, like, the plastic windows in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, and um, some of them say 100% recyclable, which mm-hmm. is awesome because it's like, okay... But then yeah. there's some that it's like, okay, do I pull the plastic out of these, throw yeah. it away? So that's annoying. That is, I don't know how to reuse that stuff. Do you have, like, a good idea, or do you just, like... Okay, for those specifically <laughs> the plastic windows, I no? honestly do. <laughs> oh, like, you do? Good! It's not something universal, but it's because I'm an artist. I can incorporate those into, like, art pieces. Cool. Like, I use it as, like, a fancy clear thing you like put over stuff like I can't explain it but I will hoard everything like I have so much <laughs> junk mail in my art room because they sent it on cool paper or like they have little mm-hmm. windows <laughs> so just like okay that's good to know because I was like I feel like 
I just don't know what to do with this tiny piece of plastic, but yeah. just like using it for like a little shimmer or something in yeah. art pieces. If, okay. if you're an artist or if you know an artist who wants to use recycled items, I mean, don't just like force all your junk on an artist. Right. <laughs> but like, yeah. And I, I know, I'm pretty sure, like I haven't done research into it, but I do think most of those windows are okay to put in the recycling. Okay, because that's generally what I do. Yeah. And maybe I'm being a horrible person, but I'm like, they have I'm there's someone who sorts it. through these things, so they might know more than me. <laughs> yeah. I, I do want to, one of the, my goals is to get to go to a recycling center and like do an interview and like video and make a blog yeah. post about it because I want to know what's happening there. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about it enough. And like one of the things that I'll get to probably more in the recycling section of this video is the, the like, the requirements for what you have to do to recycle yes. things. Because there's somebody physically sorting everything. Yes. Um, which, okay, so back to the reduce um, mm -hmm. segment. What do you do with, like, we recently bought, like, the cloth with beeswax on it to, to like, yes. remove saran wrap from our stuff. So now we have, but we still have, like, a huge roll of saran wrap. So mm -hmm. what's something that we can do to, like, reuse that? Or, like, okay. what are common materials that you're able to reuse, like, that people might not think about? Okay, for, for saran wrap, I honestly have a roll of it in my art room, just because that's where it ended up when I was like, I'm not using this stuff anymore. But I know there are a couple different things you can do in the art world using that, but if you have a lot of it, I would recommend donating it to, like, a food bank. Sure. Who might be able to, like, wrap up sandwiches for people or something. Yeah. So it can get used, and then when it's gone... Okay. <laughs> yes, we don't have to buy more bulk saran wraps from Costco. Yes. So like donating, I love that idea of donating it to like a cause that would appreciate it. Yes. And probably uses a lot of it. Yeah. So. Like I, I acquired some just water bottles, you know, like get in the big pack. My family was traveling and they're not, they're not as low impact as me. They're working on it. Yes. Kind of. It is a understand. transition. Yeah. yeah. They, they don't as fully understand it either. So it's harder for them to like... If you don't know why you should do something, you're not going to do it. Yeah. But they, they got the big pack, and like when they were flying back, they couldn't take all of their water. So it was left at my house. I'm like, I bring my own water everywhere. Yeah. I have uh, a water <laughs> bottle that I take everywhere, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to be bringing those bottles to the food bank. So somebody can get use out of them, and that'll be it. Yeah, <laughs> and then it, what's great about where we live, too, is that you can recycle a a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and it's like curbside recycling which is really nice mm -hmm. um okay so i think Ooh, and on the reuse yeah yeah reuse. go for it go for okay it. so on the straw topic to go back to that if you don't want to buy your fancy i'll get it out just so everyone can see i have fancy fancy straw in the drawstring bag that was confusing me <laughs> <laughs> this is a stainless steel straw you can get them bent you can get them in glass bamboo, acrylic, everything. They're amazing. Um, but if you don't have that access, you can reuse the plastic one. That's true. Yeah. So Just then all it. you need to do is like, most health food, health food stores should have these, like this was less than a couple bucks. And if it doesn't wiggle, bloop. There you, you go. <laughs> That's a good point. Because yeah. like those would probably last a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I have a stash of these in my art room. Since I have stainless steel ones, I don't typically use them. But I'm a, a hoarding crafter. <laughs> yes. So like, I, I have these laying around, and if I need to use them, like I've got them. And yeah. They're really lightweight, and you're probably gonna get one like regardless of if you want it. Like if you ask for no straw and they come and bring you a straw, just like wrap it in a napkin and take it home. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So it's not just like going into the yeah. ocean. <laughs> Exactly. Well, everything it goes up. right. These can't be recycled. No, so. no, because like I was listening to that recycle thing on the radio, and they were saying that when they sort through all the plastics, they just fall through. Mm. Like when they're sorting through all the plastics. So I need to hear whatever that thing was. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it was just that uh, like NPR in Seattle oh or my something. Gosh. But yeah, it was because yeah, they were talking about the compostable straws and like how yeah. they're. Like, not as good as paper, but it's a good alternative to plastic plastic. But anyways. Yeah. Um, okay, so do you have any other reuse tips? 
Uh, I have a few because I reuse a lot of things. Go for it. Um, first of all, like the little containers and like ice cream buckets mm -hmm. and all kinds of plastic things while you're still working on finding alternatives that don't come in plastic or if you need things that come in plastic yeah. for whatever reasons, no judgment here, but you can reuse them, like I use a lot in my art room, mm -hmm. but you can use them to hold like office supplies, like screws and like tool things. Instead of buying plastic bins at Target. <laughs> exactly. I, I have got like, I've got a bunch of really ugly like mismatched ones, but you can paint paint them if mm -hmm. you like sand down the plastic, paint. Um, but I use like the ice cream buckets that are all like have cute little pink, like, I don't know, like a party bucket. Yeah. And I use those in my art room to hold things. And then I have like the set, my husband was like obsessed with this one particular kind of gelato. And they all came in these cute little coordinated Oh, nice. Jars. So that's where I keep my beads. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I really do like things that come in glass for whatever yes. reason. Yes. I reuse so much glass. Mm -hmm. Like my kitchen is full. Like I, where is it? <laughs> my, <laughs> My water bottle is yeah. also a travel mug, and it's just pasta sauce jars. Mm hmm And... Yes. It's just like a, yeah, a marinara Bertolli. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a inspired Italian. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but they, they work amazing, especially once you get the smell of pasta sauce out of the lid. Oh, <laughs> that is important. And something I feel like I saw you do on, like, Instagram was taking mm -hmm. the pastas and the pastas, the pasta jars, and going to get like peanut butter or other yes. bulk foods in them. Yes. If you don't have bulk bags and you have like a health food store such as something similar to Whole Foods, they will have, they have a system for getting your tear weights so that you can just fill up your jars with food right away and you know how much you're getting. It's really nice. So I have like, I have a friend who needs to buy things in packaging because of dietary reasons. So they don't need stuff to buy bulk food in, mm -hmm. um, so they just give me all of their um, jars. So I have a lot of jars, and I'll just like I'll give people like leftover food in them, and like, cause I keep making too much food for one or two people to eat. So mm -hmm. and I like give it away, and it's really handy to have all these jars to reuse. And then and then you can say you can keep the jar. Yeah, <laughs> and then they have something that they can use as like a water bottle, cause like everyone I know sees me using this, especially since I have a neon pink cover. <laughs> yeah. But but it like dresses it up and Yeah, it makes yeah. it fun. It's not just like a I have one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all you other people who don't have the jar sweater <laughs> loser. <Hi. laughs> I crocheted this myself. Um they're available to buy if you message oh, me on hey. my website. <laughs> there you go. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, so basically it's just think, like being thoughtful and like, how can I reuse this? Mm -hmm. Is there a purpose I can use this for before I put it in the recycling bin yep. and or trash can? So recycling, recycling, again, just recently learned that there's a whole thing you gotta do. And this is probably because I'm from Montana. We didn't have curbside recycling where mm. I was. So what my family did is we gathered all of our stuff like once a month and we took it to like the university because mm. they had a recycling system set up for the university. Okay. And so we could, you know, take our plastics and stuff. Sadly, they stopped accepting glass. Oh, I know some stuff about that. <laughs> yes, and I think part of it's because like in Montana, they were using a lot of the glass in asphalt for roads and stuff. Mm. But then they just got to the point where they were like, we have way too much of this. So, yeah. but do you want to explain like things you have to do to prep recycling and that kind of thing? My apartment gave me this handy thing when I moved in. Oh my gosh! So depending on your area, you want to know like what your recycling center takes. Because if you keep putting things that they don't accept in there, they're going to not want to collect recycling anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really handy that this is like posted on the recycling dumpster at my apartments and like it tells you, I don't know, I can't see everything on there, but it tells you what to do. So you're not going to want to put like dirty things in there or anything that's not on the list. Um, pizza boxes are commonly, like everyone I know is like, yeah, you can just recycle a pizza box. It has grease on it. So you, so can't. you can't. That yeah. sucks! Yep. It's a struggle. Because there's animal fat in it. And yeah. Stuff. And then things like um, plastic bags. 
like shopping, mm -hmm. grocery bags. That's a thing, that's a huge thing that like, uh, we've been told as, as just people living in America that we can recycle like everything and then that's the solution. But it's not a solution for a few reasons. One, things like plastic bags and you're like, oh, I'll just put that back in the recycling at the grocery store. Um, you can't do much with these, and there are too many for the companies who do recycle plastic bags to do anything with them. So they have a surplus going on? Yeah, so they're just being thrown in the trash anyway. And, ugh, I can go down like a whole like, thing <laughs> on like, grocery stores with those bins. They make me angry now because I know what... Okay. Because <laughs> like, it seems like you're... You're doing a good thing by recycling the bag instead of throwing it away, but ultimately it's just mm -hmm. being thrown away. And, like, I'll probably discuss, like, in depth later about how, like, by having that bin, they can go around something else. But, like, Ooh. yeah. So, <laughs> plastic bags are not as recyclable as you think, and then just plastic in general. As Americans, we are creating so much plastic waste that yes. we can't recycle all of it. And we have been shipping it to other countries that have now been overrun by our plastic trash and they cannot keep up with it they don't want it anymore it's mm -hmm. going directly into the ocean like no like just because you put something in recycling with that good intention does not mean it's getting recycled right like i recently saw a headline that said that china is like who was like the number one person accepting our plastic recycling isn't gonna process it anymore yeah they have said <laughs> no they're like stop sending it to your garbage like <laughs> America. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. And it's it's interesting because you know, you think that like, well we we have so much like it's so convenient and how do we take it out of our lives and it's like as simple as and I think, you know, we put a lot on consumers, mm -hmm. but I think a lot of the responsibility does need to go to stores and manufacturers cuz like we were discussing like pasta boxes where it has a printed illustration of the pasta, but then it still has like a clear window mm -hmm. of plastic and you're like well, you have the image. I don't need to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows what the pasta yeah. looks like. Yeah. And, like, something else I found really interesting was, and I'm totally going to throw some shade at Trader Joe's. <laughs> Sorry. But they have, like, this image of, you know, like, being eco-friendly and all this stuff. Like, they don't have any plastic bags. They only have paper bags that they give people and reusable bags that you can buy. But then you go through their produce, produce section, and every single item is wrapped in plastic, which is so weird to me. So, like, every single cucumber is wrapped in plastic. Every, like, if you're gonna, gonna get, like, six tomatoes, they're all in, like, a plastic bag. And so, it's just, like, for me, a simple step was going into the produce section at any grocery store and just, like, putting the produce in my cart and not using those little plastic baggies that they have. Yeah. And so I was like, yeah, we'll just go to Trader Joe's and do that. And I was like, no, we're not going here. Because mm -hmm. this is just like, so, like it's literally just going to be taken off and thrown away. Exactly. You know? And there's no point to it. Yeah. Like, uh, everybody I know is like, have you been to Trader Joe's yet? And I'm like, no, I've never been to any Trader Joe's. And they're like, but it's all like an environment. You have to go there. And then I hear your comment about their produce. I'm like, I don't want to step foot in there. No. Like, that, that's that is ridiculous. the image they want people to have, but then they... Greenwashing, it's a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just interesting to think, you know, plastics haven't been along or like around that long. So we were doing just fine before plastics were around. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, why why can't we phase back into... It's all things? about capitalism. <laughs> I mean, yes. Uh, so and like, go yeah. on, please. Okay. <laughs> so, plastic is all about capitalism. <laughs> it is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but yeah, like with the, with the produce, if you think, like a lot of people just think like, if you're putting it into a plastic bag or if it comes in a plastic bag, it's cleaner. But... When when it comes loose in the store and you like, grab a plastic bag to put it in there, you're not making it any cleaner. People are already touching it. Like the people who stocked had to touch it. Yeah. And, like the thing everyone's is, touching customers. Yeah. <laughs> like think about how much you touch things. Mm -hmm. And like like you're is, not thinking about it. Yeah. And like is the is the basket in the cart gonna be that much more dirty than mm -hmm. me putting in a bag? And also I wash all my food. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> If you wash, you need to wash your food because if it's sitting loose there, like kids walk by and they touch every apple. Mm -hmm. Like you have to wash your produce anyway. Putting it in the bag does 
absolutely yeah. nothing. It just makes you feel better for no reason. Mm -hmm. So like 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 everybody touches all of the produce. Yes. And they're like, oh, that potato's not the right size for me. Seriously. Not, not that one either. And they're like feeling them all up. Like everybody <laughs> is touching them. You don't know where anyone's hands are. So been. really, we're just containing the germs even better inside yes. a plastic bag. <laughs> and then we're putting it in our filthy shopping bag. <laughs> yes. And so like, I feel like we have gotten weird looks when all of our produce is loose, but it's like, mm -hmm. we haven't gotten sick and died. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we're okay. And if you're cooking your food properly and or washing it properly, it shouldn't be a thing. Yeah. But I, I feel like it's just amazing, like, how much, like, I work in marketing, and so looking at boxes and things like that, how much is plastic? Or just, like, cardboard with, like, waxy plastic stuff mm -hmm. over it. Like, every kid's toy is, like, plastic, plastic, plastic. Like, all those little screw things, plastic, plastic, plastic. And it's like, why? Why can't it just be the doll with a tag on it? Or yes. something? Yes. Like, oh my gosh. Trying to open a toy for kids. Like, they can't open their own toy when they get it for their birthday or something. Mm -hmm. And then you have to, like, cut the thing out of the hair. It's like, yes. you don't need to pose it so perfectly. Like, put it in a cardboard box. Like, maybe with, like, a cardboard thing around it to hold it in place so mm -hmm. the hair doesn't get all messed up. But that's all you need. <laughs> yeah. And so I feel like there are a lot of things that consumers can do to you know, help with mm -hmm. all of the things happening because it's sad to think about sea turtles dying <laughs> because they're choking on all like little plastic window things from the envelopes. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing like how much like, and when you start to really realize like that has plastic, that has plastic, that has plastic. That's all going the into the, the grocery store. It, grocery store is so stressful for me. Like <laughs> I just look at mm -hmm. the store and I'm like, there's so much plastic and there's nothing I by myself, like, like it just feels overwhelming, but yes. if we all work together and like get enough people, like when you do something like this, one of the main, main things I hear is, well, I don't bother because I'm just one person. Mm -hmm. But when you're in part of the low impact movement, you're not just one person. Yes. There's other people and the more people doing it, it helps. And then the other thing is to pressure companies and yes. producers to change their packaging and what they're making their things out of you let them know like especially if like you need a specific type of thing mm -hmm. and it just comes in excessive packaging and you know that there's a better way of doing it yes or that the biodegradable plastic needs to be produced more is like contacting like maybe every month like contacting the company mm -hmm. that makes your thing and saying I love this product but I don't want to buy it anymore if it's going to be like this. Right. And have everyone you know just kind of mm -hmm. do that. I think putting pressure on the companies because it is capitalism. Mm -hmm. And so when you say, I'm not going to be purchasing this anymore, that really speaks to them. Because yeah. that is literally what their language is, is my money in your hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's, like... It's sad, but I feel like it's true. And so... I think there are a lot of things that we can do as individuals to reduce, reuse, recycle, but also if we can have companies just like cutting that for us, because it is, you know, it, a lot of it is like accessibility. Like mm -hmm. if you're going to buy cheap things, it's probably going to be in the cheapest material, which is like plastics and things like that. Um, or just like so mass produced that it's at low cost. And so that is something to consider and what it's coming from the top and it can affect everyone. Mm -hmm. It's good. And something that I found really interesting, I'm going off on a tangent now. Okay. <laughs> um, awesome. Okay, I'm recording again. All right, so. <laughs> Somewhere we got cut off. <laughs> Somewhere we got cut off. I believe we were actually talking about like accessibility. And, yes. And so something I saw recently, and because of my privilege, I had never thought about this, but recently on Twitter, someone was like calling out a grocery store because there was like cantaloupe cut up into slices and it had like that plastic black the tray thing. Styrofoam tray? Yeah, with like a saran wrap over it. And he was like, don't buy this stuff. Like tell the grocery store, stop this. And someone was like, well, actually, like I buy pre-cut fruit because I am not actually able to cut my own fruit. And so that started a conversation of accessibility along with plastics and then like discrimination and things like that. And so something I was thinking about was, you know, they cut fruit <laughs> in the store. They have a deli where you can go up and say, hey, I want like this vegan. <laughs> yeah. Why can't they do that for fruit? Like, why can't you bring up something from the produce section, bring it up, have it freshly cut for you there. And like maybe they have 
like sustainable packaging <laughs> so yeah. you're not getting it wrapped up in plastic up there. Yeah. So um, like they have all the supplies for like cutting they cut it fresh in store usually. Mm -hmm. Like Fred Myers, I'm looking at you. <laughs> like if you bring your own like Pyrex, like you can do it for the meat, mm -hmm. the cheese, and the like potato salad. Yeah, like, seriously. There should be fruit there. And something that they could implement is like if you bring your own container, maybe you get like a discount because you're not paying, you know, you're not mm -hmm. using their materials. So it's like maybe you get 10 or like 25 cents off or something. To yeah. Help, like spur that. Bring your own container. Why yeah. not? Exactly. <laughs> That's literally where all my stuff goes is into <laughs> containers I have. Yeah. So <laughs> if you cut up like a full piece of fruit and you're not going to eat the whole thing at once, you just put it in a container. Mm -hmm. You're making the dirty container. Anyway. Yes. And like cherries and things, like we bring them home in a plastic bag and then mm -hmm. we wash them and we put it in its own little container. Yeah. So <laughs> you take them out of the packaging they give you. Like who buys that like slice of cantaloupe and then leaves it in the foam? Right. <laughs> Totally! Like, I mean, there's probably someone out there who does that, but you don't need to. It's, it's usually, like... It's perfectly accessible, I think, to just, like, pick up a Tupperware or whatever you have already and just dump them in there. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, that's something we were just discussing. Yeah. Disgusting? <laughs> we're we dis are disgusting. We're disgusted. We were just discussing. <laughs> Whenever... I think it cut out the part where I was talking about my bento box. Yeah. I think we should probably redo that whole part. Okay. <laughs> Bento box! Woo! Please sponsor me. Anyone who makes bento boxes. I love bento boxes. And I need another stainless steel one. Oh, there you go. <laughs> By the way, we'll work for stainless I... steel bento boxes. I will. I'll do anything they want. <laughs> but this was one that I got for myself in high school when I started wanting to bring my own lunches. Um, and everybody loved it. I went to an environmental charter school, so like all the That's teachers awesome. were like, I love your lunchbox. But <laughs> <laughs> Baby we extra credit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is what I use when getting like uh, leftovers at a restaurant or if you go to like a street fair or something and be like, stop putting that on a styrofoam plate, put it right in here. Um, leftovers for anything. Going on a picnic. I brought this to picnics. Totally. It's amazing. If you gotta take your dinner on the go, Got a plate with you. And I love that it has little sections too. Yeah, it's not completely uh, like watertight, so if you put like soup in one side, it will get everywhere. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but like most food works mm -hmm. perfectly fine in here. And even my tall sandwiches, I just squish them down. And they, they work. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so. And it's nice because it looks lightweight. It you know? is. You want a whole bit? Oh yeah. Much lighter than like Pyrex or something. Yes. So it is so. It's, and it won't break. It's not yeah. glass. So you do not have to worry about it breaking. Um, and like it's a little bit scratched up, but like I've had this since 2015. Oh wow! So and three years. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. But I'm curious to see what you have in your bag because Amber brought her uh, sustainability bag. Is what yeah. I call it. <laughs> sustainability <laughs> bag sounds so like. Ooh. So. <laughs> I've got some extra stuff in here just because of, I mean, I think I've pulled it all out and scattered it over here. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> but this is like the main part of what I bring. If I put everything back that I needed. Um, I'm just reusing this like cheap uh, drawstring bag that I got with my cookware. There you go. I Which <laughs> you get these at any conference you ever go to. Yeah. Or <laughs> anything that's like a small washable bag. I've got Washable. That is nice. Because mm -hmm. you then put you... your dirty stuff in there. Yep. Yep. And then, like, periodically switch it out. So the things that I keep in here um, are a cloth napkin. Perfect. Which, the, be the best thing when you have, like, little things like this that go in this pouch is to have multiples so you can switch them out. Um, I have 12 cloth napkins, all thrifted. I love there them. There you go! <laughs> and all floral. <laughs> hey, flowers are the best. They are. Um, and then I usually, like, I have one set of bamboo silverware that's really, like, fancy and, like, whatever, but now, uh, today they I couldn't find them. <laughs> they were with the bulk bags that I couldn't find. But these are just kitchen silverware, like, you don't need to get anything fancy, you know? If you're, like, getting into the low-impact or zero-waste movement, you'll see all the, like, aesthetic pictures of, like, bamboo cutlery or, like, the one that folds up and goes into a little pouch. Like... You just pull them out of your drawer and toss them in your bag. Yeah. Like, these aren't even a matching set. Oh. 
I don't know about you. Does anyone have matching silverware? I I have <laughs> I have four sets of this, and there then you go. like my my husband's grandpa was giving us like this huge set. So we have like a full set of these. And I'm like, that's the, I didn't think I'd be having matching silverware, but okay. Yeah. I was like, I'll just thrift it all, but. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's like, with our cups and everything, nothing mm-hmm. matches. Cause yeah. Because we to Goodwill and got everything. everything. I love thrifted kitchenware. I'm going to make a whole video about my. About <laughs> <laughs> well, thrifted kitchenware. Yes, my plates. I have like these specific <laughs> plates that I like call my grandma plates. Like they look like you wouldn't find it in anywhere but a grandma's house. Right. And like my, my family came over and my brother saw it like sitting in the dish drain and he was like, nice grandma plate. <laughs> I'm like, yes, you get it. <laughs> it's not just me. Yeah. I'm like, it's totally great. That's awesome. But so you got your silverware and then your straw. Mm-hmm. Stainless Which, steel. Yeah. So what's interesting about this is it still has the little rivets. Is there a yeah. reason that those are there? Um, I feel like it's, for me, I use it to, like, know. For, like, grip? Yeah, it's like it's like a grip, and then it's also, like, you know which one's the top and bottom. So, I don't know if that's important to you. <laughs> I might be picky about that. Like, when I'm, when I'm putting things in the dish drainer, this is what I mostly use those lines for because I always put my silverware upright so that the top isn't like in the bottom and I do the same with my straws so I'm like all right the lines and I put it like that so gotcha I feel like it's probably for grip but I mostly use it for that <laughs> so you know which way's up yep awesome and then I keep my mouthpiece I don't touch it up a bunch and oh that's a good point yeah mm-hmm. then you're not getting your nasty little handsy germs on your mouth yep. area okay so- <laughs> yeah, and then I'll I'll usually put like a bulk bag or two depending on what's going on. If I have one clean, I need to buy more coot sack. What does a bulk bag look like? Mm-hmm. And what is it? Is it for like dry goods, like nuts and things? Yeah, I have two different examples. My favorite ones are at home somewhere, um, but from my favorite brand, first of all, oh, this just came out of the dryer, so it's inside out still. But you gotta see this has bees on it. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> I, I've talked so much about my coot sack bags, like on Instagram and my blog, but this so is they a- they are cute and they are yeah. sacks, so. And they, they are. <laughs> the, <laughs> That's the name. They are a small business in Canada. And Interesting. From. But they have like these other ones. I'll show you pictures and stuff like. Cool. I'm gonna buy another pack with like all different colors I don't have yet. I'm so excited. But this is like the cotton one, so I'll get like bread and stuff in here. Nice. And then. Whoa. Bread. Where do you get bread? I'm still working on finding a place to get full loaves, but at Fred Meyers, they have a little section where you can just pull out rolls. So that's what I'm getting. Okay. Two for five dollars. What? Mm-hmm. You can get a whole sandwich roll. We're going on a bread tangent. Because yeah. I, <laughs> I, I always get like the San Juan Island bread at uh, Costco. Mm. <laughs> it's like they have two sacks of bread in one plastic bag. And then they have the bread in its own plastic bag. Like a normal, you would get at any store. <laughs> but then <clears throat> you take it out and then it's wrapped in plastic again. I hate those so much. And I don't, I don't get it. I don't get Maximum it. Maximum freshness. <laughs> Is that what it is? Yes. Because, like, that was new for me. Mm-hmm. Because in Montana, we have a really cool company called Wheat Montana. So they, like, you know, grow the wheat in Montana, you know, make the bread and everything there, and then they distribute it. And it's just the one plastic bag. Yeah. <laughs> Not, I get that you have to contain them both. Mm-hmm. So I understand. I wish you could do it in a different way. Strap Time. them together. <laughs> it's just a string. <laughs> Seriously. And so it's like, I understand, and then it's like, yes, you put it in the thing so it doesn't get stale, I get that. But the third one? Yeah. The third one. I so, brought in health food bread, like, especially, they do this with the healthy breads because they're like, it's so fresh, it's so healthy. And you open up the bag and it's like sealed into another bag. Yeah. Ugh. Right now I'm still getting... I don't get it. I yeah. Don't. It, it. I don't and think once it matters. you break that seal, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Oh, I hate plastic. Very, it's bizarre. Yeah. But 
Okay, so you okay. can find bread at Fred Meyer, though. Just rolls. They have, like, okay. six kinds of rolls, though, so it's great. And then you can also get their, like, donuts and muffins. Mmm. Which I, I actually got uh, donuts in a bag like this. That's so cute. Yeah, I got these ones at Central Market, and they're called Eco Bags, so they're, like, 100% compostable. Whoa. Yeah, so what? at the end of my life, when these are, like, when it's raggedy like shit, muffin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And just be like toss in the compost bin. That is awesome. Yeah. What? That is so cool. And I love I love that these ones have drawstrings. The Kootsack ones don't have drawstrings, but usually like on the bigger bulk bag ones, I can tie it in a knot at the top, or I have like some rubber bands with me that I can just tie it off. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So bulk items. So this I'm ignorant, everyone. <laughs> yeah. and that's, that's why I'm here. Yeah. That's why I'm here. So when you're doing bulk, do you like measure your bag weight and then you put in the material and measure it again and that's how they charge you? Is that how it works? Yes. For typically the tear weight of bags, like I use this one for bread because it's heavier and at Fred Meyer's where you enter in like the amount of bread and they don't weigh it. So gotcha. you can put, you can have as heavy of a bag for your bread as you want. But for things like um, dry bulk food, Technically, like, if your bag weighs much like this, has the tear weight on it. But mm. I did cut out the bigger tag that was inside just to try and minimize it. Because most places I go, they don't know how to work with the tear weights. Especially Fred Myers just told me that I can't use my jars anymore because they can't verify the fucking weight. Fuck off. I deleted my, like, what? I had an Instagram Weird. post, like, praising them because I've been getting peanut butter for a year yeah. in my own jar. And then, like... The manager's like, mm, you can't do that. And I'm like, bitch. One bringing my jar to get that peanut butter, and they also have almond butter. Like, I can't be the only one. Yeah. Why are you not making it easy? Like, they can physically do it on their computers. Yeah. They've been doing it for a year. They know how. And if they don't, a manager usually politely comes over and, like, shows the person, here's the button to do that. And... It's been fine, but I guess now this old guy decided it's different now. <laughs> you should try it one more time. <laughs> Just be like, if you charge me more than I am here to pay. Yes. Like, you're, it's surprising how much, how cheap you can get peanut butter for when it's package free. Yeah. Like, and I feel like a lot of cashiers, like when you're buying bulk stuff and they're not super used to it, they're like, That's did I great. enter that in right? Because it seems like too good of a deal. Yeah, they're like, I... Did I enter that right? And I'm like, yep, yeah. because I look at the screen, I see the weight of this stuff, because I'll do the math on my phone for Fred Myers because they don't know how to do it. So I'll be like, I know that I have a tear weight written, I have like a system, where's my phone? <laughs> I will show you my system. Where is it? <laughs> you want to write it down? Would that be good? Mm, it would be no point, but <laughs> so I can just explain it. Um, We'll find that. Well, uh, one day, I can call it. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, so it's basically, I just have, like, the name of my jar, like, this is the peanut butter jar, this mm -hmm. is how much it weighs. I keep that all stored in my memos, and then I'll, like, make a list of, like, what jars and bulk bags I've brought that time, and I'll, like, do the color of the bag, or, like, the jar, and the PLU number for whatever goes into it. So then, when I get up to the cashier, if they are like Fred Myers and they don't know what they're doing. Um, I'll just have them set the jar on the scale. They're pretty good with bags, so like that's no problem. But putting the jar on the scale, and then I'll look at the scale, the full weight, and I pull up my calculator, and I subtract the tear weight from that, and then I give them the number and specify this is how much the stuff inside the jar weighs, and then they can enter the weight manually. It's, so you're doing all the work for them, and they're exactly. still, they're still like, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm the one with, like, the split-screen view of my memos and yeah. my calculator that I get prepared before I get to the front of the line, and now they're not even letting me do that. So it makes me wonder, on the flip side, so they're providing plastic bags and tubs. Mm -hmm. I feel like the plastic bags could easily be replaced by just paper bags, because, like, you know... There's people who and like aren't you're like, not storing your stuff in the plastic bags either. Yeah. It says put this into a different container. Literally, like I haven't read them, but I'm pretty sure that these ones say like, like you're not supposed to just store them in that plastic bag. Yeah, because that would be weird. But yeah. like you know, going back to talking about like corporations and mm -hmm. what they can do 
to lower their impact. It's like, use paper. Yeah. And for the tubs, I feel like you could use compostable plastic or something. Yes, because like, especially, I mean, I'm sure people are fine with using their peanut butter out of that tub, but I really like having the jar. Mm -hmm. Like the, the tubs, they aren't that strong either. So like, they're like- It's probably like flimsy. that kind of flimsy, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, that's, like you'll get peanut butter up in the crevice in there and like, mm -hmm. where you close the lid and it's all, it's not pleasant. So I'm like, I have these perfect jars. And I've been getting it amazingly, like, it is so satisfying to, like, fill up the jar with peanut butter. Yeah. Like, you shake it down and it settles and it's like a brand new jar. Well, and it's like, how simple would it be even for them to just phase out the plastic and say, oh, here's a glass jar you have to buy for 50 cents or something. Mm -hmm. And then, you, but you can bring your own next time and just have it built in. Exactly. Like, how far yes. is that? Because it, it would be just like shopping bags, like either phasing them out or charging for them. Exactly. Like if you're going to not bring a bag, we're going to charge you 50 cents for this paper bag or something. Yes. See, like, like you don't even have to buy fancy bulk bags. Like I know how to make them. Mm -hmm. Like you, you can do all kinds of things. Yes. And like all my jars pretty much are... Like pasta. Pasta jars, yeah. Is there a place to get, like, I was thinking about this, like, what is the number one thing that I use, um, like, jar-wise? And I think it's peanut butter, pasta sauce, and then what else is, like, glass? Like, applesauce. Like, I'll get the mm. big, huge things of applesauce. So are there places that you can go where you can get, like, bulk pasta sauce? Or is it just, like, eh? Just gonna have to deal with buying like a glass thing or just making it at home. But then they got yeah. the aluminum cans and stuff that you know. Yeah. See Yeah, if you wanted to make them from scratch from fresh fresh produce, you'd be doing all that work. Yeah. Putting it into your own jars. But like see, I I know that it's possible to have stores like this because there's all kinds of stores in Europe that will do all mm -hmm. kinds of zero, zero waste zero waste stores and they're doing fine and everything is beautiful and accessible and, like you can use like they're it. proving that it isn't as hard as everyone exactly. thinks exactly so a place like that would be somewhere where like you can get liquids like you can fill up your olive oil jar and you can yeah. like, get cleaner and that is like, cause, like that's one thing too like i was talking to a friend about laundry detergent mm -hmm. and how if the liquid stuff is all in that plastic stuff and it's like well why can't why can't I go somewhere to just refill this? Yes, you know? it exists in the world. It exists. Oh my gosh. You need to start this business like the camera fest. I will re, uh, re rejuvenate. Rejuvenate? Rejuvenate yeah. Bremerton in my area. Yes. There's so many abandoned stores. Like It's kind of sad, but yes. it's something you could definitely do. But it does, I think a part of the, the mindset of, oh, this is so hard, this is the hurdle, is because there are existing things and people just don't want to take the time and the work to find new mm -hmm. products and distributors and things. Like, I think that's where a lot of the fear of, this is hard, yeah. comes from. It's because of, like, capitalism. <laughs> they Again? want us mm -hmm. to just keep buying the things and giving them money and not think about it because they are just making this stuff and they're making profit. Yeah. And so if we're like spending all our time working and like to get money to buy this shit, like mm -hmm. honestly, um, that like you're too tired to think about it. Yeah. You've been working all week. Yeah. yeah. And that, like, as long as they're getting money over here, they don't care what happens to the planet. Cause they're not going to live long enough to see it like yeah. destroyed. They're going to start a new city above us. <laughs> yeah. They're like, well, we're rich enough to leave the earth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're looking at Mars. <laughs> yeah. I'm like that is not how it should be. So yeah, it's like, I don't know what the beginning of my sentence was supposed to be, but like, we're, we need to focus on this stuff. Like, there, there's a whole video. One of my favorite zero waste YouTubers is called Gitta Mary. Um, and she has a whole video of, like, I think it's even called Your Convenience is Irrelevant. Because it's like, the planet is more important than your five seconds. Yeah. It literally does not take too much to make little changes and to get in the habit to do things. And it's worth so much more than our planet dying. Like, yeah. And that's where, like, when every cucumber is wrapped in plastic, I literally find no value in that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the purpose is of that. I don't think cucumbers need that. They have skin. I don't get it. 
you should be washing your food whether they're wrapped in plastic or not. So there's yeah. things where it's like literally the consumer is finding no value. Exactly. Or like you were saying with the produce bags, like that probably was not a thing until plastic was invented. And then they were like, how can we sell this product to mm-hmm. stores and where someone might find value in it? Yeah. And so I think it's really just thinking about that. Like, and oh, I found it because I'm, I'm a writer, so I was doing research from like the 50s and 60s mm-hmm. to see like, you know, ads and stuff. Like what products did they have? And I was finding ads convincing the public that plastic with like disposable plastic was like the best thing ever. Like I th- I saw an ad for Saran Wrap and it's like you'll keep everything just perfectly fresh forever. Yep. And like now that's what we buy our cut pre-cut produce yes. in and like our meat. Yeah. But you don't But what did they use before? Like yeah. paper with wax on it, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like what they have at the deli still to this day, like when I get mm-hmm. bacon is or any kind of meat they wrap it with like that like papery waxed mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, hopefully that's not plastic because that is a thing that they do now. Most people think like with the milk cartons or whatever that feel waxy, they're like, oh, it's wax. Probably at some point in history, it was wax. It's plastic now. And it's not recyclable. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, the the oh ice God. cream cartons and everything, that's not recyclable. It's covered in plastic. See? Thought that was all wax stuff. Yep, nope, it's plastic. <laughs> what a world. Yep. <laughs> what a world. And something I was thinking about is mm-hmm. like America is a very individualistic society where you aren't thinking about your community necessarily. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that that's something that a lot of local communities are kind of striving for, is like, be a part of the community. Let's think about this. But even that's very individualistic when you think about it. Mm -hmm. And so going back to what you were talking about, where like, my five seconds are more important than, you know, taking the time to grip my reusable bags. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is something that we are brought up into where it's like, you know, look out for yourself, work hard, get your stuff done for you and your family, you're good to go. And so people are very focused on that, like getting ahead for themselves and getting ahead for their families and thinking that everything about them is the most important. Mm -hmm. Because all they know is their own world. (laughs) Yes. And it's like when you're raised in a society that is very nuclear Mm -hmm. and like you and your family, not you and your family and your community and your country and the world. And it's really interesting, like, thinking about food chains and how, you know, all of this waste and is just ending up in our environment, which is going to be consumed by the things that we eat, which is then going to be consumed by us. Like, what was it um, with the eagles, like the bald eagles in the 90s? Oh. I think it was something with a pesticide that was running mm-hmm. into the rivers, which was affecting the fish that they were eating, which was then affecting their uh, young. And so that there was like a huge drop in bald eagle populations. And that's the most important thing in America. (laughs) But just think about that on the level of like us eating fish and that affecting, you know, reproductive systems and like our children and things like that. I can't even think of eating fish now. Like I I never liked fish, but then after I I spent like my whole senior year learning about plastic pollution. That is doing that. Okay. Yeah, I've seen other YouTubers have to like restart their camera. Yeah. Like, oops, we've been talking too long. It's like, why? Camera, just <laughs> yeah. like deal with I it. I wonder if it's a setting I can adjust. Maybe. But I think like you know we do need as like individuals to think holistically, and mm-hmm. if we're gonna be selfish, maybe we should think about oh, if I'm throwing this plastic away and this thing is gonna then eat it, it's probably going to affect me, yeah. and that's probably why we have cancer. Yeah. <laughs> See, and I try and like when I'm talking. Like, most of the time, like, I, because I think of the whole planet, and I care about all the humans and all the animals and the trees and all the plants that are Mm -hmm. eating plastic, um, (laughs) because nobody thinks about that, but then I try and, like, turn my language to, here's how it's affecting human beings right now. Mm -hmm. Like, the meat industry is terribly affecting people, and, like, all the people. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So... Like, when I'm talking about plastic pollution in the oceans, it's like, oh, sea life are dying. Not everyone cares about sea life, but do you like seafood? You're dying. (laughs) Yeah. And just think, yeah, it's like you have to, like, talk about it at an individual level. Yeah. And I don't know. It's it's a little frustrating. And it is very frustrating to think that it is a, a lot about money and greed and that, you know, 
as a consumer, you feel like, oh, people are looking out for me, but it's like, really? Yeah. I don't want to be like that depressing, but it's kind of like, like you were saying, that they're happy with their system of power and how they're making money and profits, and so why would they change? Mm-hmm. And so it goes back to the consumer saying, no, we don't need Saran Wrap for the freshest Jello. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We we, uh, we want more sustainable practices and uh, help us with that, please. I hear so many people, like, just, like, I've realized by hearing people talk about, the way they talk about certain products, that they truly believe that the company has their best interest in heart, especially, like, I hear a lot with, like, makeup, mm. is there, there aren't actually... A, enough regulations on that so they're like oh this makeup is safe to put near my eyes i trust that like i won't put other things near my eyes but this it's made for eyes so it has to be safe for eyes yeah. and it's not even safe for eyes but like <laughs> it's not they it's don't not. care as long as you put it on your eyes and you keep buying it that's yeah. what matters that's funny yeah <laughs> yeah i feel like that's a thing too where i was learning about um supplements oh yeah where it's I mean, we're getting away from sustainability, but it goes back to, oh, making money to make money. Yeah. And, oh, this is working, so why would I change exactly. what I'm doing? And, yeah, it's it's just crazy to think that when, did, when was plastic invented? Like, this 50s? Yeah, that's when it, I think that's when it started becoming, like, starting to Mainstream. get out into the market. Um, but, yeah, every, every particle of plastic that's ever been produced still exists. Yeah. And it's in the environment. And in us. And in us. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure like, I don't have, like, the, the studies to pull out uh, the uh, references, but I'm pretty sure they've found plastic in people already. Like, oh, no doubt. Like, they've, they've gotten to the point of finding it in humans, and it's mm-hmm. like, can we just take a moment to think about the health of our species? Right. And going back to the circle of life, mm-hmm. and it's like, I don't want to go down, like, the depressing road. Like, there is hope. Like, we have power as consumers to change this. But mm-hmm. also, it's like... We have to fight. Yeah. Like, it's not going to be just super easy because money is involved. And yes. there are people who have power, and we need to actually fight them. Not every human can be fighting because everyone's got problems they need to deal with, and there are more yeah. problems than the environment. But everyone who can fight needs to. And, like, well, most people can do something. Yes. And I feel like there's a lot of, you know, in- intersectionality between health, what we're eating, where it's coming from in our, our environment, and all that. You know, it all comes it together. Does. And so, like, I want to think about my kids when we have them, like, being able to grow up in a place that... It's not even, like, a thing where they have to think about, if oh, I have to remember my re- reusable bags. Like, mm-hmm. it should just be the standard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? And, like, you don't have whales washing up in, like, Taiwan with 30 plastic bags in their stomach. Because <laughs> yeah. they... They can't eat anymore. Yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah, it's just sad. And, you know, there's things that we can do, and, it, you know, it's hard work. And there are so many, like, inventions happening right now from young people, Mm -hmm. like, to work on cleaning up the environment, taking plastic out of the oceans and what to do with that plastic. Mm -hmm. There are young people inventing biodegradable plastic, which I I use the air quotes every time because it's not plastic, and that's the important part. Yes. Like, there's biodegradable plastic, and that's different than biodegradable plastic. (laughs) And that would be, like, a substitute for everything that we use plastics for right now. But that needs to be produced. Somebody yes. needs to jump on that. And, and it needs companies. to replace the pipeline of plastic that's happening already. Because, yeah. like, I, you know, I saw something that was, like, an ocean a, um, nonprofit that was cleaning mm-hmm. up, like, plastic every day. And I'm like, that's great and all, but we need to stop yeah. the flow of plastic into the ocean. Otherwise, it's just going to be, like, we're doing this every day for the end of time. Yeah. <laughs> like, we... Literally we the end of stop. time. Yeah. And so... It, if, if it's something that, like, works into your lifestyle, and or if it's like, oh, I'm mad at Fred Meyer, I'm going to tweet them right yeah. now. Like, you know, those things do affect them. And a lot mm-hmm. of corporations will respond to you yeah. when they can. So Especially if you keep at it. If it gets lost in their DMs or notifications, keep, keep tweeting. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. 
But like, yeah, when, when other people are fighting out their fights, and I know I, I just, I have more time to devote to environmental issues because that's my passion. So I can help people learn like what they can incorporate into their busy life mm -hmm. to help. And there's a, there's so much that everyone can do, like m most people. I don't want to be exclusive because I know like the zero waste movement was really exclusive to disability mm -hmm. or didn't include people with disability. They probably didn't even realize that. I mean, they're privileged yeah. white people. <laughs> yeah. And but, I think that's a big thing too, is it's like acknowledging that there's probably things we aren't saying. Exactly. But asking what those solutions could be mm -hmm. to help a low impact movement. Yeah. So the low impact is more like you know, thinking about that mm -hmm. and like meeting people where they are. Um, and like, I, there's this great video from, I don't remember her name. I feel so bad. I watch her <laughs> all the yeah. time, but she has disabilities and it was about like that thing, like with the chopped up cantaloupe mm -hmm. on the styrofoam plate. She's like, I need that because I can't eat without that. I can't, yeah. I can't cut my food. Mm -hmm. So it was like, that was one of the first times that I heard about that. Like, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Now I don't hate that that exists, but I still want to work to change it. So I don't right. want to eliminate the things that are making life livable for humans. Because mm -hmm. we've come far enough. Like, these yes. people can live. Yes. Um, but to find ways to change it and pressure companies to change. Yes. And I think that is the big thing, is mm -hmm. it's like... You know, we have it. We have our voice, and we can choose to like buy or not buy things. But ultimately, I think the big pressure needs to be on the corporations, the distributors, and like they need to sort it into their mm. own thought process of yeah, and like thinking about their own individual like impacts and how they're being impacted by mm -hmm. the society as well because. It all comes around. Yep. It all comes <laughs> They're just around. turning a blind eye. Yes, but they're the probably being affected as well. Them. Yeah. They're eating plastics and fish. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy your fancy thousand dollar fish. Yeah. <laughs> it's plastic. It's with plastic in it. Yeah. Um, I feel like there was something I wanted to ask about. Hmm. So like a couple years ago, it was in the news a lot that like California is going through a drought and they had like water restrictions. Mm -hmm. and. So that got me thinking about like sustainability with water and like reducing that kind of stuff. Um, so an example would be like a friend of mine, she's from Kenya and it was just like part of their just like routine when they were showering to just turn off the water when they were soaping up their hair mm. or like soaping up their body. And so I'm in that habit now and it's like oh. great for me because I'm probably saving my, like money on my water bill. But then when I visited California, I was like, oh, I'm probably saving, you know, a gallon or two of water here and there. Yeah. Um, so are there like things outside of the world of like plastics and recycling that like you use the low impact movement for? Yes, the low impact movement encompasses all of the stuff. I typically focus a lot on plastic because it's that that's what it's I, like the that's number what one got me thing. In. Yeah. yeah. It's that was like when I when I got to my environmental charter school and the first assignment in English class was to write this like do this practice essay for our project mm -hmm. and my topic was plastic pollution in the oceans, which I went in knowing nothing about and I came out a graduate who is obsessed with plastic pollution. <laughs> So, sure. <laughs> but I do, I, I'm interested in learning more about all the other things, and like, I know that there's a lot, um, as far as water, that we can do. Um, some of that is, the meat industry takes a lot of water, and the dairy industry, so trying to reduce your intake of animal products, um, works its way up to pressure the people. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, like, the showering idea, I'm going to try and get in that habit. Yeah, it, okay. like, I thought it was going to be really weird, but it's like, actually, it makes things easier, because you don't have the water running and, like, taking the soap away, but okay. you're trying to, like, suds up. Perfect. <laughs> you know? Ah, I'm going to do that. Yeah. But, yeah, like, I've noticed for at least, like, when I'm washing dishes or whatever, and, like, you know you have to, like, put your pot in the sink to soak. Mm -hmm. What I'll do is, like, I'll set it in the sink, but I won't just fill it up right away. I'll wait until, like... When I get water, I have to, like, turn on the water and then turn on the, the filter. So, like, some water will hit. And then that will start soaking Interesting. It. And when I wash my hands, I wash it over all the things that need yeah. to soak. And then it'll get the soap and the water in there. 
and like so it's just kind of like step by step the pot's getting a little bit more full yeah with all your normal things you'd be doing anyways exactly so it's kind of like where's the overlap in there mm -hmm. cool that's an interesting idea that's like so <laughs> simple yeah like I, I never even thought of that shower thing so like we're we're sharing water yeah, ideas totally and like uh, there are like different faucet attachments you can get that like it's where it's like low flow kind of thing or like it disperses the water more so you're still getting the coverage you need but it's less mm. water coming out at a time interesting yeah so it's not like one powerful spray it's yeah. like mm, yeah it's like it does the thing it needs yeah but you're using less water totally i my kitchen sink has a water filter attached to it so i can't really try one of those on yes. there but that's awesome. I know they have them for showers too. Yeah, like Quentin just got a new shower head um, and it's low flow and I would have never known nice. because it's like, it feels the same. So I don't know if there's like a pressurized type thing in there that mm -hmm. pushes it out more, um, but you can like switch it to all the different things. Like if you want a pressurized jet or whatever. But yeah, I like it right in my yes. spine. Just one. Yes. <laughs> and, but yeah. It's just like simple things and like we don't water our lawn. Yeah. <laughs> it's like lawns are dumb. <laughs> it's just out there if it lives that's okay. Yes. The nice thing in Bremerton though is that everyone lets their lawns dry up so it's not oh, like yes. you're like the odd one out or anything. Perfect. Yes. Uh, I've but seen like lawns those are neighborhoods so where it's that one lawn that's perfect and lush all the time there's always sprinklers going. And it's just like, I can't imagine what your water bill is in the summer, right. you know, where and it's like you're paying money and I don't know how much you use your lawn if you have a lawn, but it's like we use like one part of it. We And if it's that perfect, like I know my grandpa, sorry, grandpa, is like obsessed <laughs> with his lawn. Mm -hmm. Like it is the perfect lawn and it's gorgeous. But, like, how much are they actually using it? Yeah. It's like, if it's that perfect, you don't want to, like, go out there and play around on it all yeah. the time. You don't want to have dogs over to play in your yard. Mm -hmm. You don't want to always pro play croquet. Like, I know they have croquet and we'll play it occasionally when we yeah. go over. But, like, I know they don't want to do that every day because mm -hmm. they're trying to maintain it. Yeah. So it's like, if you're putting all that work into it, but you don't want to use it because you're using so much, putting so much work into it. And it's, like, more about the aesthetic, probably, yeah. than anything. Which, like, don't get me wrong. Like, a nice green lawn looks good. Yeah. But it's, like... No, and no, and especially then maybe <laughs> if you're gonna do that, like look at the other, really look at the other areas of your life that you're using water. Yes, and then that where that's where fast fashion comes into play again, and like paper production, and like I'm I still have to call my all of the places that send like constant junk mail. I get so much junk mail, and I literally take it to the recycle bin. Yeah, and it's like. I'm not gonna use your services. Yeah. So is it something where you can call them and just tell them no? Yeah, on a lot of the credit card things, if you look at the mm -hmm. bottom, it'll be like, call this number to unsubscribe from this. I actually, like, I called and got on, like, the government do not call or, like, do not send me crap list. Okay. Which has helped a lot. Okay. And so what happens is, like, I think I called a number and it was... Um, to just sub unsubscribe for five years and then they sent a follow-up letter and you could say for all of time oh, nice. Which was awesome because then it's like I don't care about you discover. I don't want this yeah, like... garbage And after I did that the only thing I ever get now is from like Alaska air because I'm like a mm. mileage member And so they feel like they can send me things mm -hmm. But it's still like immediately shred. Yeah, you know I've got, my, my kitchen table is just covered in all of the junk mail because I eat on the couch. <laughs> oh, we have no table. <laughs> it is only couch. Our table is for all of the, the companies trying to get my husband to get credit cards. It's all for my husband. And it's like, we have all the credit cards we need right now. Mm -hmm. We don't even have a use for that extra money. Yeah. Like, like, like we're already in debt. What are we going to do? Like, put the debt Be in more in debt. <laughs> yes, please. That's what we want. That's, that's, <laughs> The government man. Yeah, yeah. We want to keep us in our place. Yeah. But yeah. Ooh, I have a fountain pen. Ooh. <laughs> that's awesome. Fancy pen. Whoa. Yeah, you can just refill this baby. What? Yeah. More environmentally friendly pens. <laughs> I'm going to figure out how to make, um, I know you can make ink for dip pens and I'm going to see if it works. Hopefully I don't ruin these. See, isn't that so interesting to think about? Like, like oh, we've moved to the future. We have these really cheap ballpoint pens that you just throw away because they never work. <laughs> it's like, yeah. why can't we? We should just 
go back to quills. Yeah, like dip pens and then when you need a portable pen. That these is are so great. cool. Yeah. And just like any office store, you could probably get that. Probably. That's I don't awesome. know where my husband got these. I mean, they're probably fancier ones because he went through a phase of being obsessed with fountain pens. <laughs> like, like <laughs> he's the kind of guy who he'll keep his fountain pen on him at all times. And then like if somebody needs a receipt signed and they go to hand him a ballpoint pen, he just whips out his fountain <laughs> pen and signs it. <laughs> and you see, he's like, like, no, no, no. Like, he doesn't even, like, make eye contact. He just, like, takes it out, and then you see them, like, standing there, like, holding the ballpoint pen, and they're like, okay. <laughs> I, 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 leaving me hanging here. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, yeah. my gosh. So, were you and your husband, like, on the same page when it came to sustainability? So, was he ahead of you? Or were you ahead of him? I am, I remain ahead of him. Okay. He still doesn't, like, I don't... Like, I've, I have this, like, notion that if you know about environmental problems, you're not going to be able to just sit there and ignore them. But I'm wrong. <laughs> and I feel like, for me, like, I know that there's times when I'm like, oh, that's a styrofoam thing. Oh, shit. And so I don't know if it's ignoring as well as just, like, not thinking about it. Yeah. Like, I think that that's my thing where I'm like, I'm hungry. We're going to go get some food to go. And I'm like, oh. Mm -hmm. for him, didn't think about that. Yeah. For him, I'm still working on uh, the... The convenience is relevant because gotcha. I think I feel like especially with like his job and how much he's like working mm -hmm. when he's not working He doesn't want to think about anything which I understand. Yeah, but I'll be like, oh, we could do this instead And like I'll do all of the work to get this more yeah. sustainable and he's like No, I just want this thing right now <laughs> <laughs> You're like, But I will do I make it better. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> but don't you care about the oceans? Yeah, it's like no, he 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 values his five seconds more than doing the other things. So like, maybe that was the universe being like, you need to chill out and you can't live in your bubble all the time of thinking <laughs> that everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> but I think that it you know it's important to like have the both sides of that. And yeah, it helps you because then when you're like talking to other people about it, you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, like, you know. My husband and I struggle with this one thing, but we found this solution that works, yeah. you know? Yeah, like, he, he has changed, like, a, bu a bunch of little things, which is, like, really great. Like, he'll he'll do the reusable shopping bag thing with me, but he doesn't, he's not in the habit of remembering it when he's not going grocery shopping, mm -hmm. but he'll come home and he'll, he'll specifically ask for paper bags instead of plastic, Yeah, which is a step in the right direction. It is. Paper bags are not very good, but they are better than plastic, mm -hmm. so I'm like, thank you. Because they will, I mean... The thing, too, is that, like, anything that goes into the landfill will not decompose. Yeah. <laughs> so it is, like, it's better than plastic, but it won't decompose still Yeah. Because it's going to be that. But mm -hmm. if you're reusing it for other things, like, I'll use a lot of paper bags for um, crafting. Like, mm -hmm. instead of putting, like, just painting on my desk, I'll put, like, paper stuff And you down. can reuse them so many times, mm -hmm. too. So many times. And, like, for packaging and stuff, mm -hmm. like, I'll use that. Like, you can crunch it up and use it for, like, filler instead of bubble wrap and things yeah. like that. So Yeah, I have all of his, like, whenever he goes and gets, like, alcohol or whatever, I don't know why, but he doesn't bring a bag in. But, like, he'll go to the wine store, and he comes out with all the little paper bags, and I have them, like, all in a drawer in my craft room, because I'm like, these are useful. <laughs> like, these will become something one yep. day. That's interesting. So, like, you just been kind of, like, educating him on mm -hmm. the sustainability thing. I think next I'm going to try and get him, like, um, a, like, a bag that's made for holding, like, alcohol glass bottles. Totally. That, like, I don't know, maybe looks like something that he enjoys. So I'll be like, remember this bag when you go to buy alcohol. Mm -hmm. Or, like, hiding it in his car. <laughs> Being like, there's something in your car. <laughs> Use that. You go in to buy all kinds of random new alcohols to try. Mm -hmm. Try this bag too. <laughs> yeah. Well, like we um, in the wine section one weekend, it was like buy six and get a deal, and mm -hmm. they had like those like meshy yeah like bottle bags, so you could like have three wines or six wines sitting there, and mm -hmm. we just bought it because we we're like, well, we'll use this again. This yeah. Is awesome. Um. So something like that. Yeah. It'd probably be good. I've seen even, like, on Pinterest, there's tutorials for everything, but, like, bags for putting all of your mason jars in when you go bulk shopping, and it has padding around them all. So they don't clank, 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 yeah. clank. Mason jars don't really need it, and, like, it's fine, but, like, they had padded sections yes. in there. I'm like, I'll just make one of those for That's this. That's awesome. <laughs>
But make it trendy. Then yeah. the people will want to do it. Yeah, it'll like look all cool. Ooh, I'll put strips of Velcro on it. He loves Velcro, and he turns all of his patches into Velcro patches, so he can Velcro patch everything. He's got jackets with Velcro patches. So that way he can like switch them out and stuff? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, he... he Velcro is his obsession. <laughs> like yeah. Everything can be fixed with duct tape and Velcro. There you go. So like he, uh, he has a water bottle, even. I need to get him to use his water bottles more and wash them between uses. Some people think that if you just use water in an item, you don't have to wash it. Like ever? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's just but my husband. I've heard mouth. from other people. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, dude, <laughs> look at the mouth of that thing. Yeah. You need to wash this periodically. And he's like, but that's too much work. I'm not going to keep using it then. I'm like... I mean, periodically could be every couple of days. I yeah. Don't it needs to be like... You don't need to wash it every day. Like, yeah. I use these for a couple days. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, ew, it looks nasty now when I get a new one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I don't think it has to be too crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, yeah, but he's got, he's got a water bottle that's just, like, the whole thing he coated in uh, Velcro. So he, like, the soft side. So then all of his patches have the hard side. That's awesome. He's got a soft water bottle and he puts his patches on it. That's fun. Yeah. That's really cool. He's such an adorable nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Working on sustainability. Me too. Yes. I am trying to think about it more. Mm -hmm. But that's where like having the items or just like, yeah. It's like I can even take my Pyrex or Tupperware. Exactly. To, like, um, we have a lot of stuff that we can already use. Mm -hmm. Like I know a lot of people getting into like they'll, when they're like, oh, there's this problem. I can join the zero waste whatever lifestyle I need to buy all of this expensive equipment because you see those fancy fold-up sporks and the but that's like, again capitalism it is <laughs> and like like maybe yeah you can get those but you don't need them right away well, and yeah. like you can use up what you have before switching over yeah like like I already happened to have this but if I didn't have this I would be bringing around a plastic Tupperware that my husband already owned yeah so and, like, I have a Pyrex thing that is literally the exact same shape and size yeah. of this. It's just Pyrex. Yeah. You know? So it, it, that is funny where it's, like, you don't... It doesn't really take anything that's special. I think the mm -hmm. only thing that people probably don't already have is, like, a straw. Yeah. Because, and then again... Yeah. Thinking about these babies. Yeah. Just taking what you've used or <laughs> been given yeah. and using those until you get, like, a stainless steel thing. Exactly. Yeah. And, like, a lot of, the, like, the, like, the straws, if you don't want to like or you're like oh there's so many choices and whatever you don't know what to get right away yeah just use these plastic ones and when they break and like aren't like they're fraying and whatever yeah buy a new one yes like you know like a lot of people are so overwhelmed but like, especially if like you just have a bunch of tupperware mm -hmm. and stuff in your kitchen and you're like plastic is no good for me it's leaching into my food what am i gonna do i have to get rid of all of this i can't afford to buy all new glass stuff and mm -hmm. it's like you don't need to get rid of it all right away. Yeah. Start thrifting for pieces that you can switch out when you have the money. Yes. You can switch out items. Donate if the item is still usable. Mm -hmm. Because, like, even if you know, like, oh, this item is leaching chemicals into stuff, there are people out there who are not going to care, and they're going to buy a plastic container regardless. Well, so you'd rather have them buy it secondhand. Yes. And something to think about is, like, the plastic leaching thing commonly comes with heat and reheating mm -hmm. so using that for like your fresh produce or something yeah. instead of like you know you're gonna reheat this macaroni and cheese or exactly something like that. yeah don't microwave them stop stop heating them up just use them for what you can and mm -hmm. thrift like you can that is so, so smart much. and like thinking about um like we transitioned from using ziploc bags because mm -hmm. that was something we would just go to costco and like oh we get all these ziploc bags mm -hmm. so we transitioned from that to pyrex and when we looked at, like, comparison prices, like, our set of Pyrex was $20, and we were paying, like, 10 or $15 every time for, like, the assortment of Ziploc bags oh, that yeah. you're just throwing away. Yeah. And so when you think about the investment and, like, oh, you know, instead of spending 10 to $15 every three months, mm -hmm. we're spending $20 one time. Yeah. And reusing, reusing, reusing. So. And see, like, like for, for the things where it's, like, I know that that's... Another issue, excuse me, but the, like, buying up front will make it better in the long run, but some people don't have the upfront mm -hmm. money, so my suggestion to maybe, like, I'm sure there are lots of ways that we can help this, but one possible way would be, like, well, see for, like, a month 
if you can go without using this so you can save that money. Totally. So, like, instead of just buying Ziplocs at all, just, mm -hmm. just or, like, stop but using the idea... them, and then once you get the money saved up from not spending them on yes. Ziplocs, you get your nice containers so yes. you can go back to life. Exactly. But the idea of thrifting is brilliant, too. Yeah. And, like, especially in summer, life. garage sale season. I need someone to go garage selling with, so if you want to go, like... <laughs> <laughs> I need to have a garage sale, by the way. <laughs> Ooh, I have a garage sale that you can donate things to if you want, because my FRG... <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Cool. My, my trunk is full of garage sale stuff right now. It's just rattling around back there. <laughs> Especially well, on all these Washington hills. Yes, it is very... It is a ruckus going around. Well, cool. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Hmm. That we didn't cover? Sustainability-wise, um, thinking about energy usage, too, mm. is good. Yes. Uh, I don't know what to talk about with that. I work in uh, at Hazelwood, which is all cars, so... Ah. I like talking about electric and <laughs> hybrid. Oh, I have a hybrid car, I just can't drive it right now. Oh, nice! I have to register it, and then I have to get someone to jump it so I can take it to the uh, auto repair place and see what's wrong with it and replace its battery. But then I'll be able to drive it. But then you'll be able to drive it. Awesome. Yeah. I was under the impression Seattle is actually doing pretty good in terms of energy usage. Like, yeah. a small amount, a smaller amount comes from coal. Okay. and natural gas, which I thought coal was a lot more because a lot of the coal that's burned in Montana, which I care about because I'm from Montana, <laughs> is actually shipped to Washington and used in Seattle. So I thought a lot of it, like I thought a lot of the energy usage was from coal. Like a higher percentage? Yeah, okay. but a lot of it's actually, actually is hydro <laughs> because of the Columbia River, which could have its own bad impacts as well, you know, with uh, reservoirs and things like yeah. that. Yeah. But, you know, Making give and take. Sense. Yeah. There's so much, like, of more more clean energy. But, like, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, like, the terrible impact of, like, making the batteries for cars. Mm -hmm. Like, my husband likes to remind me all the time, like, oh, your hybrid car isn't as good as you think because it's they had to make that battery and it's awful for the environment. But I'm like, I also bought this car secondhand. I didn't pay the company to make that battery. Yeah. Um, like most things, like I'll thrift everything. This bag is secondhand from my mom. This is from I don't know what restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> but they gave it to me. Yeah. This is a t shirt from mm -hmm. middle school. <clears throat> middle yeah. school. That I made a bag for produce. And like, like, I thrift everything. So when you get it secondhand, you're not giving money to the companies and you're also promoting reuse. Mm -hmm. Even if. You can't use an item, you can donate it, and someone else can. We need more thrift stores here that aren't Goodwill. Goodwill is evil, and I hate them. But yeah. I keep buying things from them because they're right next to my house. Yes. <laughs> so when it's I... better than Walmart, but it's worse. Well, I wonder how stores. Amazon fits into all this, because, like, literally, you are shipping everything. Mm -hmm. And, like, bubble wrap. Yes, and I've seen, I don't know, I haven't watched all the videos, but I see videos that are like, how to... Okay. Looks like it's recording still, so. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um. So, we were talking about thrifting. Amazon. Amazon. Amazon, thank yes. you. So I've seen that there's videos out there about like shopping zero waste from Amazon. I'm sure there's some methods you can use to like lessen your impact there. And like, yes, it's all being shipped directly to you, but I mean, everything that you buy in the store is also shipped to the store unless you're only thrifting, which is mm -hmm. great. I love thrifting so much. I could make 50 videos about it. That's awesome. But, <laughs> yeah. Something else, like in thinking about subscription boxes and things like that, mm -hmm. something to think about is like, so we got Blue Apron mm -hmm. for, it was like a wedding gift. They're like, get three free things. And so we tried it for like a month. And, you know, it was great, And but what was confusing about their branding is that they're like, we only use what we need. That is only talking about the food, which is cool, so you don't have food waste. But then, like, every box, you have every little thing is wrapped in its own little plastic thing. Mm. And then every box comes with, like, a freezer pack to keep the produce cool, which makes sense, because sometimes they send, send you meats and things like that that mm. has to stay cool. So at the end of it, we were like, cool, we have like three freezer packs that we're going to use in our freezer, which is great. But think if we had that every single week mm -hmm. and you're throwing like this freezer goop away and 
Yeah. It makes me wonder if there's like some sort of milkman system that they could implement yeah. where it's like they send you like a solid freezer pack and then every time like every four things the pickup guy picks up four freezer packs from you or yeah. something put Just, it back in their box yeah and have them return yeah because like when i bought my uh imac it was really cool because they're like if you need us if you don't have recycling in your area you can send us everything back and we'll recycle it which was awesome. So it's like they're thinking about how their materials affect the That's environment. That's so important. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm So it's like, companies, what can you do to yeah. have freezer goop, which I don't even trust to touch. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, that's going to split apart inside the ground and ooze and... <sighs> yeah. Well, what can you do? Yes. There Use water. Sure. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Just put water inside of the freezer bags, not this, like, blue goop. Yeah, it's the antifreeze stuff. Is that what it is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it'll, so like, it, like, stays colder longer or something? I think, like, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not an expert on any of this, obviously, as I'm sitting here, like, I, I think that's <laughs> yeah. what it is. But, like, yeah, it's, like, it, it keeps it more flexible and, like, mm. cold longer, probably, so it doesn't melt. Because it just stays in gel form. Yeah, because that's definitely what it is. It's like that plasma -y jelly goop. Yeah. Which was, I mean, like, for us it was cool because, like, we could put it in our cooler. Yeah, you could be, definitely reuse yeah, it. Yeah, but it was like, if I had 20 of these, <laughs> yeah. See, what would I be doing? <laughs> that's another place where greenwashing comes into effect is companies, like, are catching on that we want more environmentally friendly stuff. We want... Mm-hmm. We want our accessibility and ease of use along with not feeling guilty. So yes. they remove the guilt by telling you that it's better, but you can't trust them. But like, Cause we it's are all branding. Them. Yeah. <laughs> like it, they're just telling you to make you feel better. So you want to buy their product. Yes. Like something when we bought our car, we bought an all wheel drive because in Montana, it was very helpful. <laughs> we had front wheel drives our whole life and it was like a whole new world. But on the back, it's like PZEV. I have no idea what this means. It had a little leaf. Okay. And you're like, so with that little leaf, you're trying to tell me that this is like environmentally friendly or something. I have no idea what any of this means. Mm -hmm. Like, it literally is like non-words that yeah. someone would understand. But like, we just bought it because we needed like that vehicle. Yeah. Not because of the leaf thing. Yeah. But, but I, but someone might see that and be like, oh, this is a hybrid. Or like, I'll feel better. Though. Yeah. It's all about making you feel better about your purchase, regardless of if it is, which is mm -hmm. why I, like, with the whole biodegradable plastic thing, it, because, like, you can have plastic that'll break down so you can't see it anymore, but it's still plastic. Like the little molecular forms. Mm -hmm. yes. And then it's microplastics and causes its own problems. Yes. So we need the, the stuff that can so, replace like, lace plastic but isn't plastic. So, like, is compostable different than decompose like does that make sense yeah they're yeah they use two different words um i know that like you you still can't trust all of it because i like there's probably not just, regulation yeah right. there's no regulation they can just say you can put this in your compost bin like common misconception i don't know if you've heard or if you use tea bags they are not compostable they are plastic lined yeah i throw them all away mm -hmm. so yeah, but a lot of people, people will compost them. Yeah, a lot of people compost them and then they're like, they're what is all of this, like, stuff, like, fl it, it comes out as, like, fluff. Once everything's broken down, it's like this white, like... Oh, is it because it's, like, they think the tea bags are cotton, but it's actually, like, that, like, um... Yeah, like... Like, this stuff isn't actually cotton. Yeah. This is the polyester. Yeah. Or whatever it is. It's, it's plastic lined, probably for freshness or some shit, but, like... <laughs> You take it out of the package, and you don't need the packet to stay fresh. Like, right. But, like, yeah, everyone thinks that they're, like, made of, like, the paper or whatever, mm -hmm. so that they're... they're it feels paper. very papery. Mm -hmm. Just as, like, I feel like the deli stuff looks like paper with wax line, but it's plastic. Yeah, probably. I haven't verified on that, but I, like, yeah, like, there's plastic in everything now, because, mm -hmm. like, it's... Cheap for people to make. Yeah, it's just a cheap replacement for everything. Mm -hmm. And I think the convenience of it. Convenience, convenience, convenience. All we care about in America is convenience. Mm -hmm. 
What can save me that five seconds that literally don't matter? (laughs) Seriously. We're trained to think that every second seriously matters, like, that much. But it's like, well, we could make a bigger difference with those five seconds. Mm -hmm. By doing this. Yeah. Like, we're not thinking about the, like, cause and effect of things Mm -hmm. very much. Like, people with the... I know that was that, that whole thing. I don't know how much we talked about the, like, washing stuff. Yes. Um... But I th- I thought of that, so... Like, I, what, like why would I want to bring my own straw everywhere if I have to, like, wash it and take mm, the time? And, and, like, bento boxes. It's like, like, if you have a specific kit, like, you have your bento box and you have your silverware and straw that you like to bring with you, mm-hmm. have a spot cut out from the rest of your dirty dishes where you set those things. And yes. integrate it into your routine where if you know you're going to leave the house, check that spot. Is all of that stuff dirty? You need to wash it. Like, I've washed this on the way out of the house. Mm-hmm. Like, I have five minutes to get in my car, and I'm like, well, I better wash this thing. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Like, that's so simple. Exactly. It is so awesome to, like, to know that you've done it, and it's, like, not mm-hmm. a big deal. Because I think that that's the thing for people. I've like, gone home to get this. There you go. Like, the, the, I mean, like, I mean obviously I used gas, but, like, the restaurant was up the street from my house. Yeah. So I'm like... I'm going to grab my container. Well, and it's like, to you, it's that value system. Mm-hmm. Like, how many times has someone gone home to run and get their cell phone mm-hmm. that they left? Because there's the value in that and having that. Do you really use your cell phone all that much? You'd probably survive without it, but you still go <laughs> home for it. Yeah. And it's the same kind of thing. But this would probably have much more of an impact yeah, than because remembering like, a cell phone. <laughs> yeah, because I know I would have gotten a styrofoam thing, mm-hmm. and those are worse than the, like... Poof, poof from my car. <laughs> yeah. Like, just to go home to get this. Yeah. And I had to wash this, too. When I, I ran home, like, my friend was sitting in the restaurant. I'm like, I'm gonna go grab my bento box. So I ran home. There was leftovers in it in the fridge because I was lazy and I just, like, put it in the fridge. So I, like, transferred it to my Pyrex, washed it, and dried yeah. it, and went right back. And, like, like I'm pretty sure the waitress didn't even, like, realize how it's going. Like, blink an eye or yeah, anything. Yeah, I was like, I've got it. Yeah. Because... I cared enough to spend a few extra seconds. Mm-hmm. And there's one less styrofoam. Yep. In the landfill. Mm-hmm. It's not going to decompose anyway. It's well, and it's, I mean, styrofoam would never anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> styrofoam is, like, styrofoam is the next level from plastic. Yeah. It is. Because you can't even recycle it, can you? Some places you can. And I by that, they do. do they just like break it down and pack it together again and put it in things? I have no idea what they do. I need to. I really need to like go interview different recycling centers. But yeah, like, they they say you it can be recycled in some places. Most places don't take it though. Yeah, it's so hard to work with. Like, well, what are you gonna do with that again? It just turns into fluff. And yeah, like it it's probably on its last legs of being plastic. Yeah. And you can only recycle plastic a certain amount of times, and then even when you do have it recycled, you have to introduce new plastic most of the time. Interesting. I did not know that. I think there are probably some companies who are like fully 100% recycled Mm -hmm. plastic, but most recycled plastic, it's like a percentage of recycled and then new stuff. So it's not even helping that much to recycle. Yeah, because you're still introducing new Mm -hmm. parts in there. Yeah. Ugh. We're gonna we'll get through this. We're gonna either die or get through this. <laughs> I will leave an impact on this world. Yes. And hopefully my children will do it too. Yeah. I think that like talking about children, I feel like that actually had a big impact on my life because mm-hmm. like I said earlier, I think in our previous conversation, where I grew up there were you know, no curbside recycling. I don't know if that even is still an option where I'm from because mm-hmm. it's so rural and you have to have the like you know, demand cycle for it. There was another thing on the recycling that I was going to mention that we could maybe add into your video sure. after this. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I think a big part of us recycling was because, like, my dad, it was important to him to do that, so he found the things in his community to do that. Mm-hmm. And so in places where you don't have curbside recycling or, like, my father-in-law, he goes to the dump to take his stuff because he doesn't have, even have trash service where he mm-hmm. lives. So... Most places where you're taking your trash, they have recycling there. They have yard waste there. And so it's just like taking that extra effort to sort through your things. Yeah. And do it anyways. But you're going to say something about recycling. Yes. Uh, okay, for the thing I know you mentioned in your notes of like um, what to do if you don't have curbside recycling. Yes. 
There are two options that I've come up with. One that my mom and my family does is you can just keep bins in like in the basement or the garage or wherever and that's where you sort it into because in Chattanooga area you need to sort your different types of recycling mm -hmm. and dump it into specific bins at the recycling center. So we'll just sort it at home and then whenever that gets full my mom loads it up into the car and takes it to the recycling center. Doesn't take much time. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy. Like once a month, every yeah. couple months. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing, if you literally don't have that time or can't be bothered or physically can't carry that many things, is most places that don't have curbside will have a, a service you can pay for to take That's recycling. True. So what you can do, like nobody wants to pay for that, but like if you know like a few friends or like in the neighborhood, you've got a few people to come together put together the money, have the bin at like your house or one of the people's totally. houses, and everyone can put it in there. Yeah. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Crowdsourcing. Yeah. There you go. Cool. I love that idea. That's awesome. All right. Do you feel like we've covered everything? We've, I mean, touched the tip of the iceberg. We've touched. <laughs> we've we've covered iceberg. everything that's outside of the water. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah's getting hungry. That's why I Same. asked. Yeah. Uh -huh. Getting ready for some lunch somewhere? Yeah. Okay. Got my box. I know, I can grab my Pyrex. <gasps> and grab a fork. Mm hmm Do you have reusable napkins yet? Yeah, I have cloth napkins. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that, that was... Makes me so happy. I bought those a long, long time ago because I was like, I hate napkins. <laughs> yes. I have noticed, like, it's so much nicer to use, like, reusable items. A lot of reusable items are actually make your life better. Yes. It's like, so you true! You don't have to worry about this cheap, flimsy thing. Mm -hmm. And like, you can have something that, like, my napkins have flowers on them and yeah. they're beautiful. Like, all of our napkins are cute. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. they, they, they look pleasing, you're happy to use them, they aren't flimsy. Like, if you eat something with syrup on it and it's all over your hands, they're not gonna make it but worse. The paper's not gonna tear off onto the syrup on your hand and you have, like, paper all Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're so good. Well, I'm gonna have Amber help me make my <laughs> kit. Yes. And then we're gonna go get some lunch. Does that okay. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, thank you so much for watching, and go check out this lovely human's channel. I don't have uh, a vanity URL. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a link. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and uh, you can check out my blog if you're new to this whole thing. I have a couple of posts. I know I want to post more, but the most important things to start your low impact journey are on my blog. So. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me. This is really fun. Yes. Have a nice day. Bye.